Good morning, everyone. I found a uh, when I grew up, I wasn't very artistic in the sense of um, I wasn't exposed to too many paintings or arts or much music, but I'm sort of a latecomer to the arts. And last night I found the first painting that I really want on my wall. And uh, it just really captures uh, the core or the theme of today's message, which is you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And it shows who is the one filling our cup. So I just wanted to share that with you this morning. And uh, yeah, it just captures my heart. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord this morning. Uh, please stand with me as we sing our opening song, Jesus, my shepherd, my only provider.
whether we are old or young, whether we are first time or long time worshipers, whether we come full of doubts or confidence, joy or sorrow, in this place we are a family because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Welcome to all of you this morning to St. Edward's Church. Please join me in a responsive call to worship this morning. All who thirst, come to the water. Come, come all who are weary. Come, come, come all who yearn for forgiveness. The Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ has washed over us and our gracious and holy God beckons and blesses us. Drink deep of these waters. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. We continue in worship with a familiar song that we used to sing, inviting the Spirit to work in our lives. May we pray this with our hearts. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we I die 
Oh. 
Let us pray. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, and he washed it white as snow. Father, we come to you this morning because of the blood of Jesus Christ that has washed our crimson stain. We come to you forgiven, we come to you redeemed, we come to you as adopted children of God. May your spirit work within us this morning to reveal to us our true identity, where our true citizenship lies, to reveal to us who we are, a child of God, a son and a daughter and a co-heir to Christ Jesus himself the one who sits on the right hand of God and intercedes for us so that our souls may be saved, so that we may persevere as believers and saints in this world, in this dark world, in this world that is dominated by dark spiritual authorities and principalities of this world. Lord, show us that our battle is not against flesh and blood. Show us that we are a children of light living in a dark world and darkness and light cannot coexist at the same place. Speak into our hearts this morning, shine your light into our hearts this morning. Reveal to us the presence of your spirit within us. Help us to be in tune and sensitive to who Jesus Christ is this morning. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll now invite our brother Rolf up to do our scripture reading this morning. Uh, today we'll be reading, or it will, Psalm 23 will be read in German. Please stand with me for the reading of God's word. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. <laughs> Kapitel 23, Vers 1 to 6, Einstein Schmidt 6. Der Herr ist mein Hirte, mir wird nichts mangeln. Er weidet mich auf einer grünen Au und führt mich zum frischen Wasser. Er erquittet meine Seele, er führt mich zur rechten Straße um seines Namens willen. Und ob ich schon wandle in frischen Tau, für dich kein Unglück, denn du bist bei mir. Dein Stecken und Stab trösten mich. Du bereitest vor mir einen Tisch, angesicht meine Feinde. Du sagst mein Haupt mit Öl und schickst mich voll ein. Gutes und Barmherzigkeit werden wir folgen mein Leben lang. Und ich werde bleiben im Hause des Herrn immer da. Psalm 23. Thank you. Oh, uh, let us pray. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to hear your word and to obey your will. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Perhaps it's an unfair question uh, asking this in the dead of winter. But what is your favorite season? <laughs> what is your favorite season? Um, my favorite is, without a doubt, summer. I also wanted to ask you, do you like to spend a lot of time outdoors? 
When is the last time you've gone camping in the woods? <laughs> Let me also ask you, what can really put a damper on your camping trip? Rain. Rain. Yeah. What can really bug you from enjoying your time outdoors? Bugs. Bugs. Mosquitoes. Flies and other annoying pests. They're, they're everywhere. And the deeper you go into God's nature, the more abundant they seem to be. And they, they can pretty much suck away the joy that you have of getting out there in the wilderness uh, with your family. And as you can imagine, I grew up a sheltered city boy in Scarborough, Ontario, and I was never exposed much to the outdoors. So you can imagine the uh, adjustment that I had to make when I was camping outdoors in the army. And by camping, not really camping, uh, but they, 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 they promised us a good time when, when they recruited us, uh, which happened to be uh, a big fat lie. <laughs> I distinctly remember in the summer of 2009, I was in Bear, uh, a, a Canadian ar ar a base called Borden, and it's near Barrie, Ontario. And I distinctly remember this exercise. It was called Exercise Dirty Hands. And what a great name for an exercise because we were digging uh, holes all day long. Maybe 16 hours of the day was spent on digging and eight hours was doing other tasks. And we went on and on. And I, But I remember what drove me nuts. What drove me almost to insanity in the woods of Borden was the mosquitoes. It just seems like every army base has to um, have their healthy supply of mosquitoes to train the soldiers and their minds. But I distinctly rem remember uh, one distinct moment when I just snapped. I was kneeling on the ground looking through the scope of my rifle like I'm supposed to because we're on high alert. And the mosquitoes were just having an orchestra around my ears on both sides in all different pitches and they were landing and trying, you know, going through, trying to go in my nose and in my ears and I just lost it. And I stood up, unclipped my helmet, threw it across the forest and I threw my rifle on the ground and I let out a grunt and perhaps some choice words. It was a rainy day that day as well but it wasn't pouring enough for the mosquitoes. And I sat there throwing a temper tantrum. And it's a good thing that none of my staff was around because they probably would have uh, punished the whole group for, for that immature moment. But I've had a lot, of the, a lot of those moments in the military due to bugs. <laughs> Summertime can quickly sour when we are harassed by things like mosquitoes. Some of us are far better than others. And in the Psalms today, we've traveled now out into the wilderness, along the still waters, up through the mountain valleys, and arrived at the high tablelands of summer, the tables of summer as we covered two weeks ago. For shepherds, Summertime brings many joys, but they also know what's coming. Summer is fly time. Hordes of insects emerge in the warmth of summer, and they pose a serious problem for the flock. They can make sheep miserable. Warble flies, bot flies, neoflies, flies, deer flies, black flies, mosquitoes, gnats, and all kinds of other winged parasites and even microscopic parasites all thrive in the warmth of summer. And their attack and harassment of animals can sour the golden months into a time of torture for the sheep and drive them insane. Sheep are especially troubled by the nose fly, which buzz about the sheep's head attempting to lay their eggs on the damp mucous membrane of the sheep's nose. If they are successful, the eggs will hatch in a few days and small slender larvae 
are born. Then they travel up the nasal passage into the sheep's head, and they make themselves right at home and burrow themselves into the flesh. And they start feeding themselves and thus cause severe irritation and inflammation. And to relieve themselves, the sheep will bash their heads against trees, rocks, posts, and brush, whatever they can find. They will rub their head in soil and thrash about. And in extreme cases, a sheep may even end up killing itself, trying to free itself from the aggravation in its head. Advanced stages of this infection of, from this fly can even lead to blindness. These flying tormentors can cause much panic and fear amongst the sheep. There is no peace when they're present. The sheep will run until they drop from exhaustion. They will hide anywhere they can find shelter. Some will become injured from all the sporadic running about. Others will become blind and still some may even die. Only the attention and remedy of the shepherd can provide respite from the difficulties of fly season, pest season. At the first sign, he will apply an antidote to their heads. A remedy that often combined oil, and depending on which region you're from, different kinds of oil, but surely in Palestine where David was a shepherd, they would have used olive oil, maybe some sulfur and some tar, which was smeared over the sheep's nose and head as a protection against such pests as nose flies. Keller recalls what a remarkable difference it would make among the sheep once the oil had been unapplied, their behavior immediately changed. They calmed down. No longer agitated or in a frenzy, no longer restless. Instead, the sheep would start to feed quietly again, then soon lie down in peaceful contentment. The anointing of the shepherd's oil was also an ongoing and repeated practice. You didn't do it at the beginning or the beginning of the summer and you were good. It was almost a daily practice. And that says a lot about how we live as believers as well. As long as the flies were buzzing, the shepherd was vigilant and applying his special ointment. Brothers and sisters, the same is true for our lives. Even in the midst of our so-called shiny days, summer days, best days, often a small, nagging and pesky annoyance can turn our hearts sour. Even during our loftiest spiritual experiences, Satan is seeking to be a fly in the ointment and ruin our peaceful rest in God. I remember distinctly one morning after becoming a new uh, born again Christian, I had come out of early morning prayer and I had just the most amazing time of prayer in my life. I just felt the presence of God and I felt like God was speaking to me and he was revealing things in the Bible that I've never realized before. I was on cloud nine when I came up. You could not possibly make my day or ruin my day or at least that's how it felt. And in the car ride home, I got into an argument with my dad. And when push came to shove, my dad made a passing comment and he said something to the effect of, it doesn't matter if you pray day and night, my son, your character has to change. And let me tell you, my day was ruined by that comment. I was no longer on cloud nine. And it was a real fly in the ointment experience because I thought I had somehow you know gotten somewhere spiritually speaking but my dad's criticism brought me down to earth that morning on any given day 
We are faced with so many pesky distractions, burning frustrations, and people's insensitive comments hovering around their head like a nose fly. The more you think about it and replay those hurtful words to yourself, the more it torments our minds and shatters our joy and peace. And so our behavior degenerates to a disgraceful temper tantrum where we lash out at that innocent bystander. It's usually the next guy that cuts you off, or the next worker that is rude to you, or the next brother or sister at church that just rubs you the wrong way and pushes your buttons. Whatever the case, the reality is for our lives, we are often devoid of the characteristics that are befitting of the title Ambassador of Christ. We struggle in the battlefield of our minds to navigate through the deadly minds planted by people's words, especially the ones you trust and love the most. When circumstances push us beyond limits, of what we can endure, when relational conflicts threaten and to obliterate the peace inside our hearts, what shall we do then? Do we just buckle down and push forward? Do we just curl up into a ball and give up? Do we fight every person who tries to hurt us? Do we just roll up our sleeve and just work harder than anyone else to change our circumstances? Do we run away or flee from life's challenges? What shall we do? First of all, it has been my experience time and time again that I simply do not possess the goodness, the patience, the kindness, and the love that God requires of me. It has been my experience that I cannot stop myself from disgracing my Lord and Savior. That I cannot prevent myself from making myself look like a fool by the way I speak and the way I act, especially to the people that I love most. It has been my experience that everything crumbles apart if I try to do things by my own wisdom, strength, and efforts. It has been my experience that without seeking God's continuous and ongoing anointing of me with His gracious Spirit to counteract the ever-present aggravations of this life, I would crumble apart. The worst days of my life have all been days where I had run away from the anointing of my shepherd. The worst mistakes that I have made were made when I was not walking daily with the Spirit of God. The most destruction I've caused were from succumbing to my own selfishness and sinful nature in sheer rebellion of God. I have hurt a lot of people in my life simply because I try to get my way and in so doing make a fool out of Christ as a self-professing Christian. My dear brothers and sisters, the Word of God instructs us that we live in a world where it is perpetually fly season. Until the day our Lord comes again and crushes the serpent's head under his feet once and for all. The Word of God warns us that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the dark spiritual authorities and the principalities of this world. All this to say, as believers, as children of God, we simply cannot thrive in this world without our helper from heaven because Satan will not allow it. In my final year at seminary, I wrote a short reflection paper about prayer 
in the context of Christian leadership. And I stated that Christian leaders ought to support their congregants through intercessory prayer. And I also said that that included that we were to stand and engage in a spiritual warfare. My instructor, my, my instructor commented, my instructor was a believer and someone in charge of the spiritual formation of soon to be ordained ministers. The comment on my paper, reflection paper, was questioning why I had portrayed the Christian life in such a violent and visceral language such as warfare. While some Christians have a bad habit of over-spiritualizing and demonizing every little event in their life, some of us Christians have an equally bad habit of underplaying the spiritual nature of our existence and the spiritual battle that is going on in this world. Thereby being dull and insensitive also towards the good spiritual work of God, towards the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It goes hand in hand. Your, um, your acknowledgement and understanding of darkness is what uh, helps you to see the light. When you've been in the dark, then you can come to recognize the light when you see it. When you've been in the dark spiritual battle, you can recognize the holy, purifying presence of the Holy Spirit. I present to you that without the daily anointing of God's gracious Spirit upon our mind and hearts, we cannot bear the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When I say daily anointing, I don't mean that we have just a part of the Holy Spirit and that we need to somehow keep on claiming the rest from God. As a born-again believer, the Spirit indwells us and resides within us, period. He doesn't run away when we sin. He doesn't flee from us if we're ugly or throwing a temper tantrum. The Spirit of God is the seal from Christ which guarantees our salvation in Jesus. It is not so fickle like some kind of, I don't know. I've heard it said that the Spirit just runs away and comes back as He pleases. That is not what the Word of God says. When we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts, he promised us and has given us His Holy Spirit in our lives. The very fact that you are able to believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior is an attestment to your regenerated heart by the work of the Spirit. By the daily anointing, what I mean is a spiritual provision from God that is meant to nourish us and sustain us in daily living obedience, and worship of God with all our hearts. In other words, our growth in holiness is the direct result of our daily leaning on the wisdom and the strength of God provided through the Holy Spirit. God promised to replace the heart of stone with a new heart of flesh. And that renewal of our hardened heart is the work of the Spirit. And if you thought your heart was permanently flesh after you came to Christ, I don't think that's the case. We still have our sinful nature within us. We still have our hardened hearts. It are, if left to our own devices, our hearts will harden yet again. But the Spirit does not allow that heart to harden again to the reality of the love of God. The Spirit continues to give birth within you new desires of good towards seeking and desiring a closeness with God. 
God has replaced our heart of stone, but now it's up to us to cooperate and yield with the Spirit and learning what it means to honor and glorify God with everything we say and do, not by might, not by power, but by God's Spirit, says the Lord. When we, when we are faced with difficulties that push us and test us to our limits, we have a wonderful counselor and comforter whom we can turn to at any time and seek daily anointing, recharging, refueling, and renewing. And the Spirit does not just reside in a building. The Spirit is in your heart. You are the temple of God. The Spirit is in, in you, and you can turn to that Spirit at any given moment in any trouble. We can lift every situation with prayer and thanksgiving and count on the peace of God which transcends all our understandings and guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Simply put, the Spirit is active, dynamic, and intimately involved in enabling us to persevere until our race is done. There is one more threat that the summertime brings to the sheep. And as much as it is fly season, summertime is also scab season. Scab is an irrit irritating and highly contagious skin disease that is common among sheep. It's caused by a minute microscopic parasite that thrives in warm weather, and scab spreads throughout the flock by direct contact. I think we can relate to things like that in this world right about now. Since sheep like to rub heads with one another, Scab often spreads from head to head. And in the Old Testament, when God declared that sacrificial lambs should be without blemish, the sheep was to be free from defects such as scab, a blemish that was symbolic of contamination of sin and of evil. And once again, the remedy for scab among the flock is to anoint them with an oil-based remedy. Except this time, it's not just the head, but a full immersion. Because of its highly contagious nature, each sheep has to be carefully and thoroughly plunged under repeatedly to ensure effective disinfection. It is a task that requires tremendous time, resources, and a special setup and a special care and attention from the shepherd. These are the kind of snapshot moments that David had in his mind when he declared, You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Our heads are constantly exposed to the scabs of this world. By the sins of this world, our mind is defiled. When we meet people, we are opening ourselves to the potential threat of being exposed to ideas and concepts that are not godly. Our thoughts, our ideas, our emotions, our choices, our impulses, our drives and our desires are all influenced and shaped by the exposure of our minds to other people's thoughts. Not only that, but among God's people, there is a considerate amount of butting heads with one another. We try to assert our dominance. We try to become the top sheep. And so many in the church become bruised and injured due to human pride and human sinfulness. How fitting it is then to realize that God's remedy for ridding our minds of harmful, ungodly thoughts is for us to be conscious daily, moment by moment, 
of the purifying presence of the, His Spirit being applied to our mind and heart. How fitting it is for us to visualize our sinful nature like an infectious skin disease of the soul that requires regular, daily, moment-by-moment -moment anointing and saturation in the Word of God, in the Spirit of Truth, who counteracts and purges and purifies the lies, the deceits, and temptations and manipulation of sin through the Word of God. We open our minds and humble our hearts before the Word of God each day. We are inviting the healing and purifying touch of our Good Shepherd. When we pray and ask God for the strength to overcome pesky and annoying flies that are disturbing our peace in God, we are putting our head into the hands of our Shepherd to anoint us. The Christian life is a paradox in that in maturing, we are not becoming more independent of God, but rather becoming more and more awake to the reality that we are absolutely defenseless and vulnerable like sheep without God's around-the-clock perpetual care and protection. Our shepherd never rests or takes a break from us. Our shepherd is always with us, even when we're sleeping, protecting us from many harms. Jesus said to his disciples that his people would be known everywhere and recognized for their love for one another. This is what it means to be anointed to overflow. God desires that his people bear his mark of ownership, which is love and peace, forgiveness and charity, joy and patience. Our cup can only overflow. Our cup can only overflow through the anointing of God's Spirit. Our cup, our lot in life, can only overflow when we encounter and satisfy in the complete care of our Good Shepherd. The cup of our life is filled and caused to overflow by the life of Christ Himself and the presence of His gracious Spirit. That is what it means to be victorious as a believer. It is a life that overcomes every obstacle, every trial, and every trouble with joy and thanksgiving in God. Even in the fiercest storms of this life, the bloodshed at Calvary continues to overflow into our hearts, and thus our cup overflows with God's love. Our belonging to Christ will be proved by the way we stand up in the midst of our trial and suffering. When we are anointed by the Spirit of God, then and only then will we overflow in this world. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you promised us a helper, a counselor, your spirit, the spirit of Christ, that we did not have to go without, that we would have you within our hearts by the presence and indwelling of your Holy Spirit as a token, as a guarantee of your love for us forever. Lord, we pray and ask that your Holy Spirit will nudge our hearts and bring us closer to you on a daily basis. That we would not treat you as someone that we see once a week, once every month, maybe a couple times during the year, maybe on Easter, maybe on Christmas, maybe on certain occasions 
but that you would be the living God, the Good Shepherd, who is taking care of us hour by hour, minute by minute, moment by moment in daily living. Lord, we pray that your Spirit will come alive in a greater way and provide us spiritual provisions every day, that we will grow in our desire to open your word and pray before you and bring all of our requests to you with prayer and thanksgiving and receive the peace which transcends all understanding that will guard our hearts and our minds as we go about the fly-ridden world of our day. That your Holy Spirit will be a wording presence to all of the pes pesky attacks of the enemy. That we would be anointed every morning through your word by, and, and just covered by the truth in our minds and in our hearts, guarded, shielded like a shield of faith. And as we go about our day, that shield will nullify the flaming arrows of the evil one. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us will come to know you as the personal good shepherd, as the one who provides care for us 24 hours, 7 days a week, the shepherd who is ever present with us by your Spirit. May your Spirit bring us to your sweet presence every morning and humble us and redeem us and refine us of our impurities, of our shortcomings, of our selfishness, of our deceitfulness, of our falsehood, that your, your Spirit will shine the light into our hearts and reveal to us all of the hidden sin in our hearts that we need to repent of in our daily living. Lord, we pray and believe for that presence and ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we thank you for your promise that you will take care of us. Lord, you taught us to pray in the Spirit at all times, that we should always pray for all of our fellow brothers and sisters. And so we lift up Jimmy to you who is currently in the hospital fighting pneumonia. We pray that you will clear the fluid in his lungs that you will give him healing in his lungs and in his, in his body and that you will restore strength to his body so that he may return home and return to us as well. Lord, we lift up Reverend John Matheson and his wife, Marsha. We thank you that her knee was finally cleared of all infection. But Lord, we continue to pray for the restoration of her digestive system, which cannot hold down any food right now. And so, Lord, we ask for your supernatural healing of her digestive system so that she can regain her strength once again. Lord, we pray for Brother James, who is grieving the loss of a father. May your Holy Spirit go into his heart this morning and comfort him and let him know that you are the comforter and that you are with him. Lord, we pray for co-workers, those that have wandered away from the fold of God. Lord, we pray that you will bring them back. Lord, we pray that you will give us boldness to evangelize but to share and to share the gospel through our words and through our actions. Lord, we pray for our neighbors, people with great burden of caring for loved ones, living in isolation, and those who have yet to come to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. We pray that we will be a support for them. We pray that we will be an ambassador and a testament of God's love in their life. Lord, we pray for family members, especially for their faith, the healing of sickness and forgiveness of one another. Lord, we pray that you will help us to be reconciled in the family of God. Lord, we pray for the children. We pray for our children to, know, to come to know the Lord and walk in the Spirit. Lord, we also pray for a peaceful resolution in this world. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. You are the Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords. 
Lord, may your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven, and we cry to you for mercy. Have mercy on Ukraine. Have mercy on Russia. Have mercy on the geopolitical situation of this world. Have mercy on the foolishness of mankind, which begs the wrath of God. Lord, we pray that you will make your peace known in the hearts of your children in the midst of this chaos. And for all the prayers that we do not mention alive, we join our voices in the prayer that your Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For there, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let us pray for these givings. Father, we thank you for all of, the th all of the things that you have provided us in life. Lord, we thank you that we are able to overflow into others' lives. That it's not about amounts, but it's about the heart. And Lord, we thank you for all of the hidden good deeds that only you know about for those are the treasures stored up in heaven. Lord, let our, not, let our left hand not know what our right hand is doing when we seek to do good. Lord, may we do things only before you as the one who sees our heart for what it is. Let us not seek others' praise or recognition in doing good deeds, but only do it unto the Lord who has blessed us immensely and infinitely by the blood of Jesus Christ in forgiving us of all our sin and saving us from eternal damnation. Lord, we pray that we will continue to be your ambassadors of Christ and give an offering in our daily living through everything that we do and say to your glory. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our sending comes from the Heidelberg Catechism this morning. Please stand with me as for the sending and the benediction. Christ, having redeemed us by his blood, is also restoring us by his spirit into his image, so that with our whole lives we may show that we are thankful to God for his benefits, so that he may be praised through us so that we may be assured of our faith by its fruits, and so that by our godly living, our neighbors may be won over to Christ. May the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now 
and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, our Rise Early with God Lenten Challenge continues. May, your, may you draw closer to God each day and instill new lasting spiritual habits in your daily routine. Last week, the session met and we prayed and discerned that we should, uh, as a church, uh, make a donation to the cause of Ukraine. And so if you wish to donate to this cause with us, then you can simply do so by marking on your envelopes during the Lenten period, uh, checking off missions uh, along with the amount and all of, all, all of the mission givings will be put together and donated to those that are in need in Ukraine. And tomorrow at 7.15 at church, we will have our Living in Active Fellowship. And that is all for today's announcements.